Saturday, July 20th, Mackinac Island to Petuskey, Michigan. We hear from Major Pond. Mark is feeling better. He and I left the ladies at the Grand in Mackinac and went to Petuskey on the two o'clock boat and train. The train in Northern Arrow was one of the named passenger trains of the Pennsylvania Railroad serving St. Louis, Missouri, Cincinnati, Ohio, Chicago, Illinois, and Mackinac City, Michigan. It used the Grand Rapids and Indiana Railroad, a leased subsidiary of the Pennsylvania system. The train was frequented by northbound travelers to popular northern Michigan destinations north of Grand Rapids, Michigan, such as Petuskey and Mackinac City and Mackinac Island. Well, the smoke from forest fires on both sides of the track was so thick as to be almost stifling. There's a good hotel there. There was a full house, and for the first time in a number of months, I had a lecture room so crowded at one dollar a ticket that many could not get standing room and were obliged to go away. The theater has a seating capacity of 500, but over 750 got in. Mark's program was just right, one hour and 20 minutes long. He stopped at an hour and 10 minutes, and cries of, Go on, go on, were so earnest that he told one more story. From the Petuskey Daily Resorter, July 21st, 1895. A packed house and many turned away. Mark Twain's entertainment at the Grand Opera House last night. An audience which packed the Grand Opera House from the orchestra railing to the top row of the rear gallery greeted Mark Twain when the curtain rose last night. Every seat was sold and over a hundred chairs were brought in to try to accommodate those who wished to see America's great humorist. And even then many were turned away. It was the largest, the most cultured, and the best audience ever seen in Petuskey, the receipts being $524. If what he said were printed word for word, it would not seem particularly humorous, but Told in his inimitable style, it is irresistibly funny. The program last night began with an account of the lecturer's first theft. He thought it was the first watermelon he ever stole, but was not entirely clear on that point. One of his most graphic descriptions was an account of a boyhood's experience sneaking into his father's office at midnight to sleep on the couch, where, unknown to him, a murdered man had been stretched out awaiting an inquest. The people held their breath as he told how his hair rose when he discovered a nameless something on the floor, but the gruesome feeling changed to uproarious celerity when he told how, when the moonlight finally gleamed upon the corpse, he went away, taking the window sash with him. Not that I needed the sash, but it was more convenient to take it. The crowd was immensely tickled over the story of the jumping frog. An extract from Tom Sawyer, the plan for the crusade, afforded an excellent opportunity for the dialect work of which Twain is a master. Petuskey was the location of the extermination of the last huge breeding colony of passenger pigeon. A state historical marker commemorates the events, including the last great nesting in 1878. That summer, the breeding colony of pigeons arrived near Crooked Lake, 
The flock covered 40 square miles and for three months yielded over 50,000 birds a day to hunters. One hunter reportedly killed three million of the birds and according to one account earned $60,000. Records estimate between 10 and 15 million slaughtered. The passenger pigeon was never again seen in the state after 1889.